Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and huge news, huge coming out of the pro scene. Like, legit, this is being covered by Screen Rant, I don't know why, Kotaku, who usually kisses Wizard's ass, and uh, basically every Magic Channel ever. You guys know that, I mean, the only time I covered the pro scene is when something really messed up happens because it kind of outlines how bad it is. Well, now we've got somebody... Pro player Jerry Thompson quitting and telling everybody why it's so bad. So instead of taking my word for it, because I don't go to GPs and Pro Tours, I just constantly hear about them from people who did. I mean, come on, people. Let's get it straight from Jerry's mouth. And he's he's a good player. I mean, he is one of the better ones. So the title of the Reddit post, which has been already upvoted all the way to the moon, uh, is I'm Jerry Thompson, a professional magic player, and I'm protesting the state of professional magic by refusing to play in the world championship. Ouch. I mean, the gist of what he's saying is basically it's so not worth it, and also I want to raise awareness that I'm not going to show up. It's kind of like a dual purpose thing. So with no intro or no flowery anything, no emotional nonsense, he just jumps right into here's what it's like. And this is why I don't like it. Like, he didn't even say that. It literally just starts with bullet points. I mean, the title said it all, and he's like, let's go. Let's get on the train. Why we why we still stand around here? So to burn through what he said, he says, uh, Wizards of the Coast does not pay professional players a living wage. Uh, this in and of itself is not a requirement. See, I'm glad he said that because that would be so ridiculous. Like, oh, I won a pro tour four years ago. Pay me just to show up. I don't even like what they do right now to pay people just to show up. But he is correct that it is, it's almost impossible to make a living being a pro player. If you top eight at every single tournament, uh, but only occasionally came in like first or second, you would barely be above the poverty line. Then you factor in travel, forget it. Like, it's it's impossible to do. You can't do it as a job. But then again, I mean, you can't do it as a job. Everybody knows that, so don't do it as a job. Either get a sponsor or, hello, start a YouTube channel about deck building. Duh. That's where most of my money comes from. Uh, so he says, however, uh, if the goal is to sell the dream of playing on the Pro Tour, there should be something in place to make that worth achieving. I would flip that to at, at least make it so I could cover my expenses. You know, at least make it so I could like take off of work or not have a job for three months while I do this if I qualify, you know, or whatever. Uh, so let's see, between qualifying becoming more and more difficult, especially with the goalposts continually changing, that's true, they keep changing it, uh, and the lack of reward at the top, because honestly, I think they pay a thousand below eight, so ouch. Um, the message currently being sent is don't waste your time. And that is correct. It is a giant waste of time to go to the pro scene. So if you have the, the time to waste to take off of work and the money for travel and to make up for the fact that you're probably not going to top eight. And I mean, okay, most tournaments pay to like 32, but it's, it's so insignificant. It ain't even going to cover your, your plane ticket and your hotel. So if you top 32, great. You probably just broke even except that you weren't at work that whole time. So yeah, it, it is hard for anybody to say, I'm going to be a full-time pro. It, you basically have to be a writer for like, you know, Channel Fireball or something or one of them big websites. And you, yeah, you should have to work the rest of the time. I mean, this ain't the damn NFL, but like at the same time, if you did want to do this as a job, you basically can't. The only way to make enough money consistently is to cheat. That has been proven time and time again. So point number two is Wizards does not promote its players well. I kind of disagree with that. They really like to push this whole celebrity crap, but they don't promote the whole event well because his very next sentence is, oh, Worlds is this weekend? I had no idea. Yeah, they really don't push the events, and I think they don't because they get the least views and the least response because nobody watches the streams. Nobody cares about the tournaments. Nobody cares about the results because it's just broken decks and stupid, you know, same crap. I mean, if you want to watch one of the last GPs, ooh, Red Rush, Blue White Control, the end. That's it. Wow, how exciting. And then add subpar commentating in some places and subpar camera work and stuff and mixing and technical errors. It, it's a disaster. It's just completely unwatchable. Now, people who say that Magic the Gathering is unwatchable, they are completely wrong. That's ridiculous. You can make it exciting. So then he says, how many people can name all 24 players qualified for this year's World Championship? I don't know where it is, when it is, or anybody that's going. So I'm going to say zero. How many could name even 15? <laughs> that's the bar. How many can name one? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Jerry Thompson is out, so there goes the one I knew. So he says, yeah, if you can't name them, don't worry, you're not alone. Um, I think that they really do push celebrities. They write articles about the winners. They do their whole backstory. They have, like, an award ceremony and all this crap. I think they push it pretty hard. It's just they know that nobody cares about the pro scene, so even if they put in double the effort to hype it up and get people to watch it, it wouldn't work. So it's like, yeah, they're not putting in effort, but that's not really the problem. Um, and they do player profiles. They put players' faces on cards before. I mean, like, you know, it, it's reasonable. It's just, 
It's just not the root of the problem. So number three is interesting because I'd only heard little tidbits here and there about this. The new Cycle Pro system is confusing, even for those who created it. <laughs> nice. The best resources for what your pro status is, how long it lasts, and how many pro points people have is a series of fan-made spreadsheets. What? Oh, how many pro points do I have and how many do I need to qualify for this and get this and get some free buys? Who the hell knows? Sounds like some mistakes could be made there. Number four, there are not enough pro tour invites to satiate the player base. Um... I mean, they just upped it, but as magic grows, the top should grow to reflect that somewhat. Uh, magic shrinking. So there's that. Uh, getting onto the Pro Tour is already difficult, but nearly impossible for those located, wait, in North America? I, th I thought he would have said outside of North America. I mean, yeah, they hold them in stupid locations in Europe and crap, but, like, at least, what, 50% of them are in America? So that doesn't really make sense. Uh, so, additionally, the first or dead last system, like PTQs, creates very... F er, cre I read that wrong, but whatever. Creates very few people who feel like they accomplished something. It's a system designed to create losers. That's true. You slip up once, you you're screwed. I think at a, at a PPTQ or PTQ or whatever... You either come in like first or second or you go home. That's it. So if, if you made one mistake or got one bad draw or whatever, boom, you, you, you just didn't qualify. That's why, I mean, screw the pro tour, go to GPs. I mean, there's, there's that. Like, there are counterpoints to what he's saying here. It's just, yeah, everything he's saying is correct. Number five. Oh, this is rude coming from him, but it's true. Coverage is still abysmal. Over the years, Wizards of the Coast has received countless feedback, and uh, we have... And all we have to show for it is an advantage bar, which have you guys seen the advantage bar meme? It was hilarious. The guy got off to fairy's emblem and the, his other opponent was sitting there with literally nothing in play at all. No lands, no nothing. And the advantage bar was pointing at the Teferi douchebag. Really? That added a lot. I think all the advantage bar added was people disagreeing with it and saying, no, he has the advantage. And they just copied, you know, World Series of Poker anyway, so, yeah, that was stupid. So, um, Worlds is using a pair of dead formats, Kaladesh Standard and Dominaria Draft. Ugh. And was barely advertised. Uh, would anyone watch this? W would anybody watch it anyway? No. Or he says, why would anybody watch it? It's whatever. Um, if it... Uh, if it was a timing constraint to have the event on the weekend before the pre-release, you can use Modern. That's true, I guess. Modern is more exciting lately because they printed a bunch of, you know, crazy, like, automatic includes and stuff, and some new decks came out, so, yeah, that's cool. And then six, with people like Alex Bert Bertoncini, what, are, what is it, Bertini? That Italian cheating douchebag. And Jared Bocher still playing Magic. I actually don't remember who that is. Um, it doesn't send a strong enough message to those who would consider cheating. Oh, amen and hallelujah. Why is this not number one? Hell, why is this not number zero on the list? He left that for six. This is the last bullet point he has. Yes, they need to make it damn clear that one, the results of a tournament that you watch and follow are legitimate and two, cheaters are not welcome in the game, which those that aren't really one and two. That's like one and one B because they go hand in hand. They don't do that. They cover up for it because... Well, the rumor is, and this is barely even a rumor at this point, Mark Rosewater has allegedly claimed that he wanted Alex back after he got ke uh, caught cheating twice because he wanted a villain and people would watch more. They'd watch the Pro Tour more just to see him lose because they hate him. He is not necessarily incorrect, but he is wrong. That is wrong. That's ridiculous. I don't respect the tournament. Nobody respects the tournament. And for every person caught cheating to outline how many people are cheating, how bad the situation is, there's like a hundred that don't get caught. And anybody doing well consistently is cheating, period. You cannot run from bad draws. You cannot run from mulligans. That is luck. It will catch up with you at some point, okay? There's nothing you can do. If you are winning too consistently, it's because you're cheating. That's all there is to it. That's how probability and math works. That is literally how they caught Fabrizio and, and Tony and whatever, the Fabrizio guy. He even finishes the statement with, I am not comfortable with thieves being allowed inside tournament halls. Damn right. So screw you, Mark Rosewater, if that is a true rumor that you're the one who wanted him back and, and told everybody and pulled some strings to bring him back. It backfired. Everybody's just pissed. He made it to top eight and he was getting, you know, all kinds of harassment online. Very, very merited harassment. His pseudo apology excuse thing was practically just taunting people. It was utterly ridiculous. 
So then he says some anecdotes, which, you know, is his own personal thing. So this is where it gets ugly. As I write this, I'm sitting in my Las Vegas hotel room waiting for the tournament to happen. We had to show up on Tuesday, despite most of us having no commitments until midday Thursday. So that's cheap. You know, 200 bucks a night in some places. Ouch. Deck lists were due Tuesday, which basically meant Monday because of the forced travel on Tuesday. Don't know what he means by that, but okay. I mean... Whatever. Uh, plus, the information was communicated very late, which threw off many of the competitors' plans. So, yeah, you lose an entire week of work and got to pay for a week worth of a hotel in an expensive city. Ridiculous. I mean, honestly, they should have Grand Prix um, G Green Bay instead of Milwaukee. It is way cheaper to stay in Green Bay. I mean, there's like $60 a night hotels that are actually not that bad. So leading up to the World Tournament, we were spammed with nine emails of varying importance. Buried in one of those rather lengthy emails was a small paragraph about needing to RSVP by a certain deadline if you wanted to have a plus one, which led to a tweet from Ben Stark about how his girlfriend wouldn't be allowed in the venue. <laughs> Ooh, should have read the whole email, Ben. Um, <laughs> that's cold, though. That's really rough. <laughs> Several others chimed in that they were in the same situation with their significant others. Did nobody read the email in its entirety? It's kind of important. If there was a rules change in there or something, my God. I mean, come on, people. How lazy can you be? But still, that is ridiculous. That is really bad writing and stuff and really bad communication. So uh, that was eventually fixed. Oh, yeah, I'd probably just let her in. I mean, duh. Um, but certainly not before it caused a bunch of unnecessary stress on the competitors and their loved ones. Uh, I both understand and respect the reasons for increasing security, but this situation is another instance of Wizards of the Coast poor communication. Plus, they have no security. It's a gun-free zone, and nobody there is armed. At least that's what I heard. So, guess they didn't learn from the Madden tournament. So that was an important topic and should have been stressed rather than added to an email as an afterthought. <laughs> Ouch. Number two, after Pro Tour 25th anniversary, players had to figure out Team Series rosters for the next year and scout for potential sponsors, but it was impossible due to the lack of information from Wizards. Ouch. Is there a Team Pro Tour? What if members of our team fail to achieve gold status for the last half of the season? No one had answers to these questions. And, and trust me, there were no answers to those questions. Um, we were told to wait for more information and still don't have all the answers. Number three, leading up to GP Sao Paulo, which, my God, that better not be a gun-free zone. Brazil has almost as many murders as the entire rest of the world, if some random thing I saw online is true, which is probably not. Uh, the at Wizards underscore Magic BR account made four tweets about the GP starting only five days beforehand. Ooh, they mentioned three artists and a panel with two Wizards of the Coast employees, nothing about the tournament itself, nothing about the reigning player of the year or most recent Pro Tour champion in attendance, and nothing about the tournament itself. Wow, guess they didn't want anybody to show up. But then again, in Brazil, should you even leave your house to go anywhere ever? Probably not. Uh, <laughs> there is room to pro promote new sets, artists, cosplayers, and players. Better yet, work with your visible players to help promote these things. Yeah, like say who's coming or hype it up a little bit or just, you know that they were favoring like a bunch of gay and trans people, anybody not white and any artists that are all buddy-buddy with them. I mean, come on. Their politics and their social agenda and all that crap are way more important than, you know, organizing a tournament properly. They want to change the world, they want to change society, and they don't care what the consequences are. That's why virtually everybody at Wizards has to be fired and replaced. It, it's a disaster over there. Although, shout out to the couple Wizards employees who are fans of my channel. What's up, guys? I love you. I mean, let's just say I quit my job after four years because it was pretty toxic, and then they went bankrupt two years later, so I wasn't wrong. Um, you guys are even, like, tougher for staying at a crap hole like that, especially with the pay that they give you. It keeps going. Number four. Remember Pro Tour Dominario and Channel Fireball's innovative uh, green-blue Karn deck was somehow posted on coverage? <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I didn't hear about that, but... Damn! So their entire tournament was potentially ruined, and all they got was an apology. <laughs> what? Okay, was it Channel Fireball hosting that one, or was that still Star, Star City Games? Because I'm not sure which one is funnier. Anyway, <laughs> these mistakes severely impact tournament integrity, are not acceptable, and would have... Uh, been easily avoidable if those responsible for coverage were familiar with standard and could recognize that green blue Karn was a new archetype. I mean, if if there was rumblings on the internet and that's where they got it from, they got it from a forum post that was leaked from one of their little team buddy, you know, things, kind of like, you know, the mastermind or whatever. If somebody leaked a deck out of there, then it is what it is and they just picked it up and covered it. Like, how did they get the information is my thing. Like, how? why couldn't Channel Fireball's team keep it to themselves? Like, how did the deck list get to them in the first place? 
I don't know. Unless they like it was part of the notes and and they were allowed to read everybody's deck list and they were the only ones who had the deck list and then they revealed it. But regardless, yeah, very unfair, very dick move. I mean, if, if I had a top secret deck that I thought was totally bonkers, I would not want the entire deck list posted during like the first day or whatever. Or beforehand. I'm not I didn't I didn't hear about this one. I don't know. Uh number five, everything surrounding the silver showcase was a disaster. Um, I think I know what that was. If you want to get fresh eyeballs on magic, there are diminishing returns on inviting three Hearthstone pros, which God, I didn't even cover that. I was so disgusted by it. Um, who likely share some chunk of the same audiences. Eh, yeah, maybe. I mean, the whole point was they don't, so I don't know. Some of these points in there are a little off, but whatever. Uh, two of the players were former Magic players who left the game in search of greener pastures and were rewarded for it. Yeah, they all made money elsewhere. Um, not only by being successful, but by wizards themselves. What? I'd love to hear that exact detail um the format they played booster draft with beta and other old packs which that that was that it was that invite only like 16 person or 8 person or whatever uh beta draft isn't something that can be replicated by the viewers yeah it's like four grand a pack i think yeah i would think um the format was also not the best showcase for how great a game of magic is and that's why i took issue with this at the time why the hell are you taking hearthstone people and having them go to a premium tournament it's like whoa wizards is flying me out for this like this is cool i better real quick just learn beta learn how it works learn the basic rules of the game let's have fun and then you know they have ten thousand subscribers on twitch or whatever so of course they're gonna be like hey i'm going to the special tournament watch it duh and then boom people see magic they see magic being played and they're like oh that looks cool it's beta there's nothing cool about beta okay unless you were playing back then and it's like ooh nostalgia beta is garbage it's low powered simplistic like it would look like a children's card game which i think it actually was intended to be initially well, actually all the religious imagery and the really dark art and the fact that it was for D, &D players maybe not I don't know. I don't know what Garfield said. Anyway, um, yeah, it, it made absolutely no sense to for the, the first time people would see magic is that garbage because beta's a freaking joke. I mean, compared to the, the tidiness and the fairness and the, the interactions and the, the proper almost design of magic in the last couple of years, you really wouldn't want to show people beta. It, it's so much worse. They spent all the money, had all the prizes and everything. It was this whole big thing, and it did nothing but drive people away from the game. Wonderful. And yeah, he finishes up with, yeah, the budget for organized play is already small, and occasionally a large chunk of the money funneled through is wasted on stupid crap like this. Which, that was my slight modification of what he said, but I think he would have said it if he was less polite. So uh, he says, here's his solutions, not just, I'm complaining and leaving. Good luck, dumpster fire, woo. He's like, no, here's how you fix it. Boom. Number one, star building. I completely disagree. We don't need celebrities and the same person by the nature of wizards or magic is, is not going to win every time. So no, we don't need celebrity players. We don't need star building. That's completely stupid, but I'll read what he said anyway. Uh, this doesn't come at the expense of something else. Don't be too proud to take note of some of the things SCG does. I have literally no idea what those two statements meant. SCG sucks. Um, create player driven narratives, do interviews beyond deck techs. I mean, I guess, uh, like, that's interesting. It's, you know, it's what you do in the downtime between matches. <laughs> Have slides with player information. Eh, that'd be kind of nice, you know, get to know them, whatever. I mean, I'm not that into it, but, like, you know, it works for other sports. So, yeah. Uh, professional players are the least utilized tool at Wizards of the Coast Disposal. Let me answer why that is. Most of them are douchebags. They cheat on their girlfriends. They get, like, divorces, and then they cheat on who they were cheating on with, and... They have criminal histories and they're all on Adderall and just, they're not the type of people that you want to showcase, okay? Pro players who do well usually have such messed up lives and messed up personal issues and like I said, the drug problems constantly and then they, they treat others like dicks and then they constantly cheat. So like, I agree with Wizards downplaying the pros and the people and showing as little of them as possible. That is actually really smart and you know damn well they're doing it on purpose. So he says, yeah, many of them have large Twitter followings, you know, like larger even than Wizards of the Coast official announcements, but, uh, you know, so? <laughs> so, however, a kit detailing what sponsors can expect from a broadcast would be incredibly helpful, too, as they are mostly interested in visibility. Yeah, that, yeah, if you're going to get a sponsorship, you better get some airtime, is what he's saying. Uh, the Pro Tour team series was supposed to make things easier for players to get sponsorships. Not really, I don't really see how that, I mean... You only got to buy one to get one sponsorship for your whole team, I guess. 
but then it cost triple to fly him out. Uh, but if you were one of the many who didn't know that Worlds was this weekend, that should speak for itself. <laughs> Damn right. Yeah, how many people are watching? That's all people who, who do sponsorships care about. How many people are watching? How many eyeballs am I going to be in front of? And are you personally going to be wearing our shirt on camera? Uh, so two, hire commentators who can follow the game, are familiar with the formats, and can provide engaging commentary. <laughs> Me, for example. Um... <laughs> Okay, I don't follow the meta that much, but I'll be entertaining. One way or the other at the end of the day, I will say some crazy, crazy shit. Um, hire me, wizards. Uh, other things like production value and how to make limited interesting can come second. Uh, the only thing interesting about limited is how many people are cheating at it. Just the sheer number. Um, maybe they should do a segment on that. Uh, flashy animations, bright lights, and a huge purse might make players check it out. But if the commentary isn't engaging, they will leave. That's true. Don't leave it up to the graphics department. Make sure the content isn't garbage. Um, create more pro tour invites. See that I, the more people competing, the less people are going to consistently win money. Like you, you're less likely to win money if you're going up against more people. So that's, that's just stupid. So he's dead wrong on number two, which you, you might have remembered. They hired, I think it was either three or five or something, uh, pro players to be their pro advisory board so that they can fix pro magic. Like that they did that very recently. If this is the kind of suggestions they're getting, they're going to make it so much worse. They should ask the audience, ask the customers what they want, not the pro players. Who gives a crap what the pro players want? I mean, if they're like, I literally don't know when to show up and if my wife can come. Legitimate complaint. But other than that, th they're not the customer. So yeah, he was dead wrong about point one and three. So number four is, uh, I'd like Wizards of the Coast to value the working relationship they have with partners and various community members. <laughs> not me uh their actions have indicated that they feel like everyone is replaceable yeah that's because the same people shouldn't keep winning and if they do they're cheating so everybody is replaceable that's what mulliganing and getting mana screwed and drawing the wrong cards does to you so yeah i wouldn't get too attached to the right person because uh, you know at poker tournaments still there's a lot of variance in poker a lot a lot a lot of luck involved you know you ever heard of the old uh, oh he pulled a suck out card yeah it happens Longtime pros and former winners get eliminated at like the 11,000th spot. I mean, it happens. You can lose by getting not the cards you need. That's how it works. So yes, everyone is replaceable. That's why between rounds, when people are like, oh, now they're in the top 16, boom, go interview them, have them fill out a sheet, get their background, do a thing on them. It doesn't have to be the same people over and over and over. This whole working relationship crap that we need less of the pro players being buddy-buddy with all the judges because they get preferential treatment. Same goes for wizard staff members and employees at Channel Fireball and Star City Games. How the tournaments are such a disaster, you get preferential treatment if you're not a white male. Just ask the Star City Games judges. Allegedly. Or so I have heard. So anyway, uh, yeah, their actions have indicated that they feel like everybody's replaceable, but that's only true if you don't care about your product and or community being the best it possibly can. Yeah, that's obviously incorrect. So uh, about 75% of what he said would make things worse, and he's completely wrong. So uh, good job. Hey, make it fair, entertaining, and, you know, respectable. And that's about it. That's all you need to do to fix it. Just make it not crap. So the funny thing is, uh, the, the pro player ambassadors that are supposed to be on the, on the, the council, the advisement council, whatever the hell they're calling it, uh, he puts this at the end. Won't the pro player ambassadors help with these situations? Maybe, but I doubt it. You and me both. Pro players have regular meetings with Wizards of the Coast officials at Pro Tours for a while now, and very little has come of it. See, why is handpicking like three of them going to help? It, it, if anything, they're biased in who they pick. They're just going to listen to what they want to hear and they're not going to fix anything or they get some dunce like this guy who doesn't know how to really fix it. So uh, our feedback is heard but rarely implemented. If I thought having pro player ambassadors wouldn't be more of the same, I would have happily applied myself. Well, thank God he didn't get in. He's projecting his whole, hey, I play well. I should have a celebrity following. You guys should be focusing on me, you know, like wishes onto what he thinks the tournament should be like. No, we don't need celebrity players. I, I wouldn't care if a different person won every single tournament. Give me the backstory. Now I'm learning about a new person. Are they interesting? Are they cool on camera? Let's, you know, get an interview with them. Like, I, I don't care who they are, and I don't care if it's the same person every time. This whole fanboying crap just makes people argue on the internet. Oh, he was treated unfairly, and I like him, so he should have won, and blah, 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 and the judges were unfair. It just causes arguments, okay? So he also said he doesn't think that going from four to six pro tours is really going to help anything. He said maybe, but eh. And yeah, mathematically, that is exactly the result that you should come up with. Maybe it'll help, but probably not. And uh, finally, he says, why protest at all? Because remember, he's not showing up. He's just like, I'm withdrawing. Screw it. I'm not going to bother. Um, Wizards of the Coast is used to being in a position of power and leveraging that however they can. <laughs> 
Yeah, not to mention a lack of accountability when one of their dumbass staff members screws up. Uh, why invest resources into Magic Online when it continues to make money? Why increase GP payouts when players show up anyway? And, and they cheat to get there. Um, why help pro players when they could continue playing regardless? Or they will continue. So the whole point is like, not no more. <laughs> so he says, I want a Wizards of the Coast to know that the player base cares about these issues and are willing to sacrifice in order to demonstrate that. It really just proves that he is, but okay. At the end of the day, we all love magic and want it to be the very best version of itself that it could possibly be. We have shown that we care by continuing to play the game and hoping that things get better, but that clearly hasn't worked. So yeah, he's out. I mean, it's half to make a statement and get attention, and it's half because, honestly, the tournament's not worth going to. By the way, if you think he's exaggerating, uh, somebody actually posted that the next season for Pro Tour qualifiers and crap and the PPTQs and all that, it cycles over and starts over in 15 days from uh, today. And they don't have next year's uh, schedule yet. So how do you know if you should qualify if you don't know if you'll be available that day and in that city or whatever? Which I thought they already said what the cities were and, and the days, but you know. Maybe they mean more specific schedule, but either way, like, whatever he's saying, if it's true, that's pretty damn bad. So, I mean, the result of all this crap is, uh, entitled rich kids who don't mind cheating are the only people who can afford to go to GPs, and they only do it for the ego, not the money. And that's what it is. That is what it is. Not entirely, but that's a lot of what it is. They got the money to burn, they, you know, either work for themselves or some other convenient little thing, or they just have so much money they don't care... And, you know, the, all the travel, all that, they don't care, and they don't care how they're treated, and they're just like, whatever, I just want to win so that people respect me, because they're just shallow people like that. That's the type of person who can afford to deal with all this crap and all the hurdles they have to jump through just to get to a tournament. So yeah, I agree, completely huge waste of time. If you want to go play at the pro level, just screw the whole pro tour, it's a joke, um, go to the GPs. But also, don't go to the GPs, because those are a joke too, everybody's cheating, and it's even worse. So that's what Jerry Thompson has to say. I'm going to extend an invite to Jerry Thompson if you want to come over to my place and we could just stream some uh, some Nintendo 64 original Mario Kart 64 during the world tournament instead of you going there. Um, we'll see who can get more views. I got a, I got two chairs and a capture card, man. Let's go. Hell, I even got two headsets and two mics. I mean, let, let's do it. Let's go, Jerry. Come on out to Wisconsin. I'll give you 50% of the Twitch donations. That's my standing offer. Like I said, I gave my opinion on all of his different points. He's, you know, he's got some points. It, I just disagree with his exact way of fixing it. But it's such a mess that, like, I could be wrong, too. I mean, it's it's just so disastrous. How do you fix something this bad that's so fundamentally mismanaged and, and just so awful? By ignoring it and not watching it, which is what people are doing right now. So, <laughs> there you go. Cause and effect in action, people. So, what do you think of this? Leave a comment down in the comment section. I mean, do you not care? Is it at least interesting? If you're not interested in pro play, you're like, wow, I didn't know it was that bad. Um, I did. In fact, I think he was sugarcoating it a little bit. I think it's even worse than what he said. Two lines about people cheating? Come on. Half the damn thing should have been about people cheating. So, yeah, it's a disaster zone. I mean, this, this really is very insightful. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next video.